Are you crazy? Because I know I am, and this is Cardfight Crazy. I am Joey, and I have a deck profile here. Uh, I've been back in New York for around a month now, and when Team Crazy is together, we do match recordings. And there's so many different matchups that we have because of the number of decks that we haven't gotten around to doing deck profiles. But I definitely want to have, for at least all of our decks, one match and one deck profile that go along with it. So that way you can see what we're using in that match and just have it uh, connected. So for this one, first I have my Black Tide, as I call it. Aqua Force. Specifically, Maelstrom. <laughs> And I'm going to go through this in the way that I generally build a deck, which first thing I do is decide upon the grade threes. Two different grade threes, both at four, both extremely important. First up is Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. His skill is Counter Blast 1 when your unit, when your grade three rides it, so it's a break ride. It gets plus 10,000 power until end of turn, and the skill auto from Vanguard. When this unit attacks, if it is the fourth attack or more, draw a card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards to retire, and then your opponent cannot guard with grade zeros from hand to guardian circle. And Glory Maelstrom. So we have a cross break ride. And Glory Maelstrom, ultimate break, limit break five, counter blast one when this unit attacks, it gets plus 5k until the end of the battle, and your opponent cannot guard with grade one or greater from hand to guardian circle. So you're sitting on there, you cross break ride, you counter blast one to activate the skill, then you go on, you gotta get three attacks off. So one, two, maybe a Stacy in the back, maybe Tidal Salt right there as well. And you're just gonna get three attacks off, and then for the fourth attack, you counter blast another one, and your opponent can only guard with intercepts, uh, special Guarding Abilities, and G-Guards. So no Grade 0, 1, 2, or 3 from hand, but they can still intercept, can still G-Guard, can still use abilities that uh, move it to the Guardian Circle, things like that. But it can be a big pressure, and the entire deck is focused around Guard Restrict. Guard Restrict is one of my favorite mechanics, and a lot of decks I play have some semblance of Guard Restrict in one way or another. The Black Tide being one of them. So from Grade Threes, I move on to the starter. And the starter I love for this, the starter I love for most Aqua Force besides Blue Wave, I run it, and not Ripples of course, but in, like in Savas, in Maelstrom, in uh, Transcore, I play Andre. I love Andre. Forerunner and GB1 from rear guard. Counter blast one. Put this unit into your soul. Choose one of your other rear guards. And until end of turn, it gets the ability that once per turn, when it attacks a vanguard, stand it and give it 2k. You can do this with many different units. You could even do it with Tidal Assault, because when Tidal Assault attacks the vanguard, his skill and Andre's skill would go off. You do one or the other. So you can't do both. But you do one or the other, so you can actually attack with Tidal Assault and then stand him and give him 2k. Then you attack again and you can't give him, uh, he doesn't lose 5k and stand again. And if you choose to lose 5k and stand Tidal Assault, then you cannot give him plus 2k as well. It's one or the other since they're both the auto once per turns after it attacks a Vanguard. But sometimes that works because Tidal Assault's that automatic stand and maybe he's the only thing you got on there and you like turning it. You have a booster behind him so you can do 16 then 11 with him. But there are many other cards. You could do Stacia. You could do it with uh, Saber Flow Sailor. You can do it with the uh, Generation Break 1 Wave 2 or more draw card. Tidal Assault, you're generally not going to pick him. He's like a last ditch ever though. Sometimes it's, it's useful. I just wanted to point that out because Tidal Assault is being run, and there may come a game 
or two, or you, when you play a bunch of games, I mean a lot, when you play a lot of games, you're going to see all the scenarios. And one of the scenarios is the only thing you got on there is title result, and you wonder, hmm, if I use Andre's skill, what happens? But I'm pretty sure that's correct. It's, it's one or the other, so you can stand and lose 5k or stand and gain 2k. Can't do both. Triggers, this is where I go next when I'm building a deck. Heal triggers, I like heals. G guards are great and incredibly useful on a glass cannon such as Maelstrom, and Maelstrom, in my opinion, is the ultimate glass cannon. Four copies of Battle Siren Malika, we do not draw enough. Just don't. Don't draw enough, so I need draw triggers. And Malika's got a cool skill, she's the Margo clone, throw her in the soul, choose a unit, get, it gets plus 3k. That can be helpful. That can be very helpful, especially if you do Andre skill onto a unit, because then they can attack first. And actually, you can do Andre skill onto Magnum Assault. And then you can put Malika into the soul and give Magnum Assault 3k, so that way Magnum Assault attacks for 12, then he stands, gains, four, gains 2k, then he attacks boosted, uh, so 21, say, if you get a 7k behind him. Then his skill activates because he was boosted. Can't have lost one. Stand him again. And then attack for 16. Just a lot of multiple attacks. And Malika helps get numbers a little better. Speaking of multiple attacks, Alec Bors is one of your main units that gets multiple attacks. And for me, he's an incredibly important unit. So his skill is GB1, rear guard. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a vanguard. Return him to the deck. Choose a unit on your rear guard circle. Move it to the circle that he was in. So if he's in the front right, you can choose any unit on the field. Even another Allen Force. So say you got your vanguard here. And you attack. Slide him over. Attack. Then move Malika up. You can do whatever you need to do. But he gets those extra attacks. Incredibly important to get four attacks. That's the big number. So you need one way, preferably two ways, that you can get four attacks. And Alec Bors, as long as you have a unit, as long as you have him, another unit on the field, and then another unit in the front row, you're getting four attacks. And four is the magic number. And four is also the magic number for maybe the most important trigger. I like Alec Wars, but at the end of the day, this is about guard restricting. So I have to go with the most important trigger being Despina. Blue Storm Marine General Despina. Her skill is when this unit boosts a vanguard with Maelstrom in its card name, your opponent cannot call to guard circle grade zero cards from hand, and then at the end of that battle, you return Despina to the deck and shuffle. Simple, and it's for one of the most important plays, because we can already get the, if we cross break ride, then we get our G guards, intercepts, skills only. But what if they don't die to that? Then you have Despina. And for our strides, it'll activate because we'll always have a Maelstrom in the heart. So we'll always have a Maelstrom Vanguard. Four copies of Blue Storm Shield, Homerus. This perfect guard is weird to me. And the biggest reason it's weird is because only if your Vanguard has Blue Storm in its card name does it get the perfect guard effect. Now, it can hit, it can guard any rear guard, but only if you have the Blue Storm Vanguard, which, with both Maelstroms being Blue Storm, that's fine. Uh, it also has a wave ability, wave three or more. Soul Blast one at the end of the battle that he boosts, if you have a Vanguard with Blue Storm in its card name, bounce it back to hand. So if you need that extra booster, then you have it, and all you have to do is make sure he's alive, 
and Soul Blast 1. If you have the Soul, you can bounce it back. Other grade ones, Stride Fodders. You know, when it comes to important things, Stride Fodder are. So with eight grade threes, three Stride Fodder makes 11. Not going to want to drop, I uh, want to ride Blue Storm, Dragon Maelstrom. Then I want to cross break ride with Glory Maelstrom. So that takes the number from 11 down to 9. So preferably you have nine one card possibilities to stride. Three of which are Nikki's, and the other six of which are one or three copies of each Maelstrom. On to another one of the most important cards, Battle Siren Stacia. Stacia has a wonderful skill, GB1. Rear guard during your turn, this unit gets continuous, this unit can attack from the back row and auto. When this unit attacks from the back row, it gains plus 3k. Simple, it's a 9k attacker from the back row. If you can line your back row with that, you could be locked in the front too, and if you drop down three Stacias, you still get four attacks. If you have a Stacy in the back row and two units in the front row, then you have four attacks. And it could be a nice rear guard sniper, because, like I said, uh, Maelstrom is the ultimate glass cannon. Anything you can do to relieve pressure off yourself while putting it on your opponent is for the better. Two copies of Blue Storm Battle Princess Theta. Blue Storm Battle Princess Theta has two skills, both activate from the rear guard. First one, auto rear guard when this unit attacks. If you have a vanguard with Maelstrom in its card name, gains plus 2k. Wave second time only when this unit attacks, if you have a Vanguard with Maelstrom in its card name, it gets plus 3k. So she jumps to a 9, she's a 9k attacker anytime, but wave 2, she's a 12k attacker. Remember, wave is the attack. So wave 1 is your first attack, wave 2 is your second, wave 3, and so on. It's that same way. But we have a 12k attacker on wave 2. Very useful. And one one of Battle Siren Melania. I've been playing around with how many Melanias I want to run. Melania is incredibly useful. She's probably my favorite card to combo with Andre when you go into Commander Savas. Because her skill, wave third time or more, Generation Break 1, wave third time or more, Counter Blast 1. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Great Thru Gator Vanguard with Savas in its card name, you may pay the cost. And if you do, you draw a card, and Melania gets plus 5k until the end of that battle. I showed some combos earlier in the video where I was talking about specific cards, but if I haven't gotten to the card yet, then you know I'm gonna hold off. At the end of the at the end of this deck profile, I'll do a simple little combo video. There, some stuff. It's not too heavy. It's really easy to figure out, but it's always nice to show. And then more one ofs just in the grade two section. We have the one of. Battle Siren Nicolette, and Blue Star Marine General Spyros. So, Nicolette is about drawing cards. Wave two or more, when this unit attack hits, draw a card. Useful. Really great. When, you're, when you know that your opponent's going to take it, when they don't have the cards in hand, you know, if it's been a bad game, you can combine her with Andre, and GB1. Just wait till your second wave, attack, restand, attack. Try to draw two cards off of that. It's really useful. Really nice. I like her to one of. I've been thinking about dropping it for one more of our next card. Uh, and not him. I mean, the next one afterwards. Blue Storm Marine General Spyros. He's probably going to go up for a Magnum Assault, but he does have a good skill. Counter Blast one card with Blue Storm in its card name. At the end of the battle, that, that this unit attacked a Vanguard. If you have a great three or greater Aqua Force Vanguard and it was the first or second battle of that turn, you can stand him. Now, I am I have him in right now, but it's mostly because I only own three title assaults. I only own two magnum assaults. I was thinking of swapping him out for another Rascal Sweeper, but I haven't been there. I wanted to do this deck profile as is because this is the one that was in the match. And I don't know if we're going to show Aqua Force in another match. Uh, the match I'm talking of is Dom playing Ghosties versus me playing Maelstrom and there'll be a link in the description of that. But his counter last one, generally it isn't a problem, depending
depending on what you're doing, if you're going into Melania, and like you have Melania in your, in your hand, and you know you're going to go into Commander Savas, then that's two Counter Blasts right there. Or that can be three, that'll be three Counter Blasts right there, and then you need one Counter Blast for a Crossbreak Ride, or you need a Counter Blast for... Uh, you need a Counter Blast for Commander Savas. It's tough to go to. His Counter Blast cost can be a problem, and there are other cards that don't use a Counter Blast at all. Now, the card that I was thinking of swapping Nicolette for, Nicolette out for, would be another copy of Saber Flow Sailor. Saber Flow Sailor's skill is Generation Break 1, essentially Wave 4. Uh, retire this unit at the end of the battle of this unit's act. If it was the fourth battle of that turn or more, then draw two cards. If it's the fourth battle or trigger happens, notice the you may pay the cost. So, if it's the fourth battle, then you may pay the cost. And if it's the third battle, her trigger doesn't activate. So you can Andre with her to attack, stand up again, then attack for the fourth battle, and retire her. So, wave one, two, or three doesn't trigger. Fourth time or more, it does trigger. It removes her from the field, and it adds two more cards to hand. Great card, very useful for being something that I can put down into play, use, and then remove for something better. Something maybe like Magnum Assault. Magnum Assault skill, Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1, though it doesn't say on here, this is the wrong version from the trial deck. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked a vanguard, if this unit was boosted, you may pay the cost. If you do stand it, it's plus 2k. So if he's not boosted, you can't pay the cost. Trigger doesn't happen. So that's why with Andre, you can... Andre and Malika, you can do a nice little combo where you attack him, stand him again, attack him boosted, stand him again, then attack. And you'll do... Uh, 12, then 20 or 21, depending on what you got behind them, or 20, or 18, or something. But you do a boosted number, and then you'll do a 16. Magnus Salt is great for that, but he's also the Counter Blast 1 cost. And there's no way to counter charge here. Though the Counter Blast come in one at a time, there's just no way to counter charge. I'm going to put both of these units together, because I adore them equally. Early game, it's always about the Tidal Assault. Tidal Assault skill, really simple. Once per turn, at the end of the battle that he attacked the Vanguard, stand him, he loses four. He loses 5k. So it goes from 9 to 4. But if you got a 7k booster behind him, 9 to 11. If you got a, any booster behind him when you're on grade 2, then he's a 9, probably to a 9. And then a boosted unit to get over that 10 or something. And Rascal Sweeper. Rascal Sweeper is the great combo with Theta. It's the cards that are designed to be together. Rascal Sweeper, wave one only. When he attacks, at the end of the battle, you swap his place with the unit in the same column with him. But also, when he attacks, if you have a Vanguard Maelstrom, he gains 2k. He's an 11k attacker, and then he swaps with the unit behind him, who could be Theta, to be a 12k attacker. I said I was going to talk about combos at the end of the video, and here I am still doing it. It's hard to stop. You just always want to share the knowledge. I don't know. Haven't done a deck profile in an incredibly long time. So, still trying to get into the swing of how I want to do these things. Haven't done a deck profile in G-Era for me, I think. No, there was one, like, there was like two or three a year ago. But it's been, it's been that long since. Into the G-Guards. And the number I like to play in basically all my decks is 5. Now, if I'm not playing 5 G-Guards in a deck, then i got to have a reason why. But in this one, I like 5. Uh, this is post-Fighter's Collection. I don't have any other cards from Fighter's Collection. I don't know what I'm going to be picking up. There's a lot of decks, a lot of cards to look at. Didn't go to my locals, so I didn't see around, but people have some stuff. I'll check, but that's, once again, I wanted to do this video with the deck that was used in the last match, and instead of one that would be adjusted, because I know I'm not going to use the GB8 for this, but the heel trigger and the G-Guard, probably. But we have Grand Leader of Sky and Water, Flotia. So her skill is wave 1 or 2. When your unit is attacked, she gains 5k. 20k shield only on wave 1 or 2. 
And then with Ice Barrier Dragon, I'm not going to go through all that. <laughs> ah. Then with Blue Storm Deterrence Dragon, Ice Barrier Dragon, his is wave 1 or 4, gains 10k shield. So that sweet spot against Aqua Force is attack 3. Good to know when you're playing against Aqua Force. And with these. I mean, now there's the new G Guardian, which gives all the units resist and gains 5k for however many you have on there. But to force them to go into that, the third attack of the turn is still the sweet spot. Uh, two one ofs in the G zone because I don't have another Commander Sava, or don't have another Wayne like Savas. So, he's a trial deck card, he's the one I'd immediately get rid of from a second point, like Salvas, just haven't ordered it, haven't gotten around to it, building other decks instead. Uh, his attack is, or his skill is wave 3, or more. Yeah. His skill is essentially wave 3, when it attacks, draw a card. When this unit attack, wave three, when this unit attack hits, draw a card, choose a card from hand, call it to regard. Tidal Boar Dragon, I don't think I actually said his name, is Marine General of Heavenly Scales, Tidal Boar Dragon? <laughs> yep, I got that right. And then Marine General of Heavenly Silk, Christos, wave one only. Counterblast one, when this unit attacks a vanguard, you might pay the cost. If, if you do, all your rearguards in the front row gain plus 2k and the skill auto from rearguard. They get wave three or four, when this unit attack hits, draw a card. So, he's alright. Uh, slide those off screen. Then we move into the land of twos. So that's, that's what this G zone is a lot like. Land of twos. First, we move into Disaster Maelstrom. He's not horrible. If you played a lot of your hand and you know you're not going to get hit with pressure and you just don't have, or you just don't have the cards to go into Commander Salvas because you need something on the field that can really be useful by him and you're just looking to get a stride or you're looking to hit the cross break ride. His skill is when he attacks G Persona Blast, search your deck for a card with Maelstrom in its card name, add it to, reveal it to your opponent, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. If you have a card with Maelstrom in your soul, Use up to three year, three of your units in the front row, and they get plus 5k until end of turn. That part rarely ever happens because I'm rarely going into this guy. I've never actually gone into this guy in what I'd consider the late game. But he's a good setup if you have good stuff in your hand, but nothing really for Commander Salvos. You can't ex you can't utilize Commander Salvos, but you could really go into a Wailing Salvos or a Lambros turn if you could just get that. That stride fodder to your hand. So you can go search out a grade 3 and get it. Or you can search out for your cross break ride if you really need it. Getting a grade 3 to hand, if you know you're not going to get pressure and it's not going to be that bad, you still get your triple check afterwards. So it's an additional card to your hand, one that you know you're going to drop your stride. And it allows you to get one card stride. Two copies of. Mm, Mega Useless? <laughs> Admiral Maelstrom. It's just, he's not that good. Once per turn, Counterblast 1 and G Persona Blast. Oh no, it's not. No. <laughs> it's Counterblast 1 and G Blast anything, but you're probably, if you ever, if you ever hit, you're going to choose the other copy of Maelstrom. Choose three of your opponent's rear guards, and for every phase up copy of Admiral Maelstrom in your G zone, they retire one of those. So if you ran a full outlet of Admiral Maelstrom and hit on the last time, they you choose three of your opponent's rear guards and essentially retire them, but that just on hit part. There's better ways to deal with that. If you really want to go on making your opponent retire some cards, then play just play straight Savas. But for Maelstrom you're here for the guard restrict. And your way of dealing with their rear guards is by killing them quickly with big pressure and big attacks. Your usual first stride, Storm Dominator Commander Salvas. Act once per turn, G Persona Blast. Choose one of your rear guards and it gets plus 5k and continuous. This unit can attack from the back row. Then he has a GB3 wave third time only. 
when this unit attacks, you throw your opponent's rear guards, your opponent chooses one of them to retire. It's easy enough. That part's not important. You're just setting him up, you're getting those extra attacks, maybe you're drawing some cards off of Saber Flow or the other one. Two copies, like I said, it's a land of twos. Two copies of Lambros. Lambros would be a great card to put up at four. Drop Admiral Maelstrom. Drop those two one ofs. I just don't have them. It's that simple why I don't have four Lambros in here. Take four. G Persona Blast. Choose two of your rear guards. Stand them. And if you have GB3, they gain plus 10k. So if you have four attacks, you can go into Lambros first turn. You can. And sometimes. I mean, if you play a lot of games, then you're going to find a situation where going into Lambros first turn stride will happen. Generally, though, Commander Savas. Then Lambros. Lambros is one of the best finishers in the game. Fantastic card. That plus 10k, especially if you're doing so many attacks, especially if the first thing you do is Tidal Assault attacks a rear guard, so that way Tidal Assault still has his trigger for the first time that he attacks a vanguard, because he's 19, then he's 14. If Magnum Assault attacks a rear guard, say you have a Magnum Assault, a Tidal Assault, a Stacia in the back row, and something to boost the Magnum Assault that's not Stacia. Tidal attacks a rear guard, Magnum attacks the other rear guard, Stacia attacks the vanguard, 9 to, doesn't matter. Then you go into Lambros, stand those, Tidal can attack for 19, then 14, Magnum can attack for, let's say there was a Melania behind him, I'll attack for 26, stand, attack for 21, and that's with no triggers. Great finisher, great, great card, a lot of people call him Lambroke. And here we have the tiny little difference. There is an incredibly small difference in the artwork, the Revival Collection one here. It shows more thigh. It's like slightly smaller on here or something. Or it's moved back just a little bit. But it shows more thigh. More thigh on the Revival Collection. But it shows more thigh on the Revival Collection. That's the entire difference in their artwork. And even their flavor text stays the same. And then, because this is about guard restrict. The true finisher, the one that I prefer to end the game with. Okay, so guard restricting with the Vanguard is Wailing Savas. Wailing Savas has two skills. GB3, when this unit attacks, your opponent chooses each of their rearguards for however many rearguards you attacked with and retires them. So if you attack with five rearguards, wipe their whole beard. <laughs> if you attack five times before him, he's the sixth, wipe their board. Beautiful. Three times, they retire three. If he's the fifth attack, they retire fourth. If he's the second attack, then they retire one. But don't make him a second attack because his GB2 is wave third time or more. Counterblast one, when this unit attacks, this unit gets plus 5k for each of your rear guards that attacked, and your opponent cannot call grade one. So with, Sa with uh, Wailing Savas, you're trying to make it so that way they can use grade twos, G guards, intercepts, and special abilities. Because you're running all the Lambra, because you're running Maelstroms, you pop Despina behind, then you go for the fourth attack, retire three of their rear guards, make it so they can't call grade zeros, make it so they can't call grade ones, grade twos, intercepts, G guards only. It's guard restriction. Uh, and just to talk about a general field setup that you could find yourself in. Uh, something like, this is really good, or something like that, that's even, that's, that's, that's really good. So the way you want to start it is you got to start it with them. 11k at the Vanguard. Now, if they have a rear guard that can intercept, they might be trying to save it for Wailing Savas, or they might be smart enough to use it right now if they feel like they can guard Wailing Savas with their G guards. So they might intercept now. And that's okay, well, we'll deal with that with the title of the salt. So 11k happens. Since you're still resting on a maelstrom, let's just say it's that one, you have that maelstrom name. Slide back and attack for 12k at the vanguard. What you're trying to do here, you have to attack the title. So hopefully, you're attacking a rear guard. If not, mm, screw it, 16k at the vanguard. Title stands up. 
then you go in with well, like Savas and Despina. You counterblast one, you'd gain one, two, three, fifteen thousand power, retire three rear guards, they would not be able to call grade ones, grade zeros. Since it's the third battle, grade ones, or since it's third or more, grade one, since it's fourth or more, grade zeros. So it'd be grade twos, intercepts, abilities that allow you to guard from mine zone or from back in the rear guard, and G guards. That's it. And then you try to get those triggers, try to get another stand trigger, another stand trigger, so that, that's still a 9. At the end of the battle, Despina goes away. The other simple one is cross break riding. Really, with this exact field setup, you can do exactly the same, except this time, you can keep Despina in your hand. You're getting the same amount of power if you went into like a Lambros. Because you're 28 versus 26, maybe 28 versus 30. You know, you're getting basically the same amount of power, but you do the exact same thing. Try to attack a rear guard because you need to hit that fourth attack to trigger. You retire one of their rear guards, draw a card, counterblast another one. You'd have to be at five damage. Stop them so they can't use grade zero, ones, twos. So it'd just be intercepts, special abilities, and G guards. Stacia can always be useful from the back row. At this point, if you're just going for the crossbreak ride, that's when Melania should definitely just be in the back row, not be anything great. If you're going for that, then you can bring Melania up, because she could be a 12k. Counterblast 1 and draw off, you still have the counterblasts. And, uh, she also has resist. I forgot to mention that. That can sometimes be important. She has resist. Magnum Assault. No. Magnum Assault can basically ensure everything you need. Like, even with just this field, you can get it. Even with just this field, you can, you can cross break ride no problem. Because you just go 16 to Vanguard, counter blast 1, stand him, 11k to the Vanguard, 9k anywhere. And then 28k, Guard Restricts. Even if you're past that turn, then you just call this man and do the same. And then them. If you watched the whole thing, I thank you. Uh, please do. If you enjoyed our con if you enjoy our content, then let us know in the comment section. Uh, this is just the way that I do deck profiles. Jacob and Dom haven't done their deck profiles yet and I'm gonna let them do it whatever way they want. So, you know, Dom might take five minutes, whereas I would take 40. Jacob might take 10 minutes, whereas I would take 40. With our three different styles, and the way that we play the game, the way we explain the game, the way we think about the game, I like to showcase that in the different content. I do everything when it comes to Vanguard, just slowly. I don't mind, I like to take my time. At locals, I'm often one of the guys who gets really close to going to time, especially if it's a three match game. Sometimes you can be really, sometimes I can be rapid. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> when I'm playing Maelstrom, I can go pretty quickly because it's turn four win or die by that point, usually. But I love this deck. It's not competitive. I don't care about that, though. I don't play competitively. I have like 16 or somewhere 16 to 18 G era decks and if I would say if I wanted to be competitive I wouldn't have so many decks because I would just get something that I feel is competitive and then learn it in every single scenario. No, I just like playing different styles all the time. A lot of my decks do focus on guard restrict and this is probably one of my heaviest ones to go around with Guard Restrict. Those are the cards you need. Just gotta get the multiple attacks, get a lot of pressure. You can always grade two rush, almost always grade two rush with Maelstrom and just with Aqua Force in general because Tidal Assault's just way too good. But I'm Joey, this is Card Freight Crazy, and if you made it through this, I know you're crazy too.